And there's a close relationship between Europeana and EU Screen. EU Screen uh, is an expert in the audiovisual domain, and Europeana is an expert in cross domain aggregation, if you want, so including libraries, museums, and archives. What I tried to present this morning was that um, we feel that both EU Screen and Europeana are now at a turning point where for the past five years uh, the, it was really important to get as many people on board and many institutions on board so to keep very low thresholds on how difficult it is to <coughs> participate. Well that's resulted in uh, an immense amount of material uh, but not always in the qualities, in the resolutions, in, you know, with the right statements to allow us to do the things that we want to do now, which is to provide uh, yeah, much more engaging user experiences. Um, so I think that's what uh, the next two, three, five years will be about. Uh, how do we make use of the best of that material, source much more high quality uh, audiovisual content, and do interesting things with it uh, for schools, for researchers and creative industries. We do live in a world of plenty, uh, whether that plenty comes from the cultural institutions or just from the world outside is something to, that can be debated. I think it is our role to guide people uh, to the relevant material of the relevant qualities. I think what's also very, really important, we are we're a public body. Uh, EU Screen is, uh, Europeana is, so our main mission should be to make as much as that material as openly available as possible for real reuse. Um, so I think maybe that's the, probably the, the most important part of our curational work. And then guide them through the ethical minefields, the legal minefields and the political minefields to be able to do that. Uh, some countries have started digitizing much earlier than others. Uh, we're now and the, therefore the infrastructure will be completely different. Um, the country where I'm from, the Netherlands, I think is quite far ahead uh, in having an infrastructure and having that infrastructure embedded in every cultural institution. Um, and therefore, you know, organizations like the Rijksmuseum, which are often used, uh, you know, just give access to the highest quality material in open license, etc. Not every country can do that or is in the position to do that. There are some differences in the domains. Uh, the audiovisual domains is by far the most complicated. Uh, you know, the, the rights issues are because you have cameramen and directors and third cameramen and visagistes. <laughs> uh, it's just so much more complex than for your, let's say, an average painting. Uh, so that's one. And then there's the technical aspect. You know, what do you do with all these file formats, uh, inline video, um, etc. So uh, many differences and we need to cater as Europeana to these many different aspects. Um, so we're trying to work with um, the front runners and, hel and helping the people who are right behind it to you know, join along by giving them the tools and the knowledge uh, to do so. I think there are two cases. Uh, one is where the material has been given to us in a lower resolution than the institution has because of copyright issues or maybe for a bit of fear that the thing will be out there and you know loss of control i think that's something that we can renegotiate and i think it's important to do so wherever we can when the material is really scanned in very low resolution i mean that's a pretty significant investment to redigitize um, i think we need to be smart about it I think uh, maybe we have been digitizing too much from, uh, let's say, a supply side and not enough from a demand side. You know, what are the things that we really want in high resolution? And in certain cases, we might be okay with rel relatively low resolution yeah, for research. Uh, uh, the amount of data is often more important than the resolution it comes in. But for creative reuse, you need high resolution. I think that that's probably the most fun part of the job, and uh, I don't spend enough time on it. But there is uh, the, the World War One collections are incredible. I mean, there is a there are diaries from soldiers in the trenches of the World War, 
and also there's uh, footage film uh, in color sometimes uh, which was totally unique and uh, I keep following I think that's uh, it gives you an insight into a world a hundred years ago almost and um, well actually it's been a hundred years and sometimes you just feel so connected through because it's so personal this the, you know, a diary is an extremely personal thing and uh, it really connects you deeply into into that area. I'm a I'm a historian myself, of a completely different nature. But uh, yeah, the human interest side of these things is just incredible. <laughs>